think he's going to be a great president of the United States. And I present to you now Senator John McCain. Thank you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for attending what I think is one of the most important parts of our entire process of selecting people for public office, and that's the town hall meeting. It's an American tradition, and it's one that I intend to continue throughout this campaign, because it's not only an opportunity for uh, you to hear from me, but it's a great opportunity for me to hear from you. There are tough times in America. We all know that. And we need to hear and talk and have a conversation amongst us as to how we can find ways and deck, get this country moving again and back on its feet. I'd like to mention just a couple of things to you very briefly, and I'll mention a couple of issues, and then we will open it up for questions or comments. Um, first of all, uh, I travel to Columbus Junction, Iowa today to look at the <clears throat> damage that's been done by the floods. It's terrible. It's gripping all across the state of Iowa, parts of Illinois, Missouri, as you know, and even several counties in the state of Minnesota have been affected by this terrible tragedy. People have been driven from their homes, but there's been a great reaction from the state and the local and the government authorities. And we all know that our thoughts and prayers will go out to all of the families who have been so badly affected by this terrible flooding situation. Um, one issue that I'd like to bring up with you and uh, be glad to discuss it further with you is an event that just happened today. <clears throat> As you know, since the Watergate scandal of the 1970s, uh, we enacted uh, a campaign finance reform law. And by the way, I'm very proud that's the second campaign finance reform, major one, was enacted by me and Senator Russ Feingold in a bipartisan fashion. But that reform provided for uh, public financing of general campaigns, election campaigns. In other words, after the conventions that you apply for and receive, the nominees of the major parties apply for and receive public funding. Every candidate, presidential candidate, since then has <clears throat> made use of that. And Senator Obama announced today that he was not going to take public financing. That'll be the first president nominee, a candidate for president of the United States since the Watergate reforms that has not done so. And also, I'm, and obviously I'm very disappointed uh, because whenever you <coughs> uh, go back on your word to the American people, it erodes uh, the trust that they have in all of us. And Senator Obama made it very clear about a year ago, actually not even a year ago, that he would take public financing if the Republican nominee did. I have committed to taking public financing, as you know. And Senator Obama, uh, in response to a questionnaire by the Midwest Democracy Network presidential candidate questionnaire, and this was released in November of 2007, the question was, and it was, if you are the nominee, well, I'll give you the exact words, if you're nominated for president in 2008 and your major opponent agreed to forego private funding in the general election campaign, will you participate in the presidential financing system? Senator Obama, answer, yes. Then he goes on to say, I've been a longtime advocate for public financing of campaigns, et cetera, et cetera. The last sentence, and by the way, you can go on the internet and read this yourself. He said, quote, if I am the Democratic nominee, I will aggressively pursue an agreement with the Republican nominee to preserve a publicly financed general election. My friends, the, the facts speak for themselves. I, I strongly feel that Senator Obama ought to review his commitment, not to me, but to the American people, which he has obviously gone back on. So, and second of all, I would also like to mention that, as I said, town hall meetings are important. I'd like for, for Senator Obama, I've invited him for us to do town hall meetings across this country. As many of you 
um, as some may recall in this room, uh, Barry Goldwater and President Kennedy back before the 1964 election uh, had agreed to fly around the country and debate each other and have town hall meetings around the country. Um, and uh, unfortunately and tragically, the tragedy of Dallas occurred, so they were unable to do that. Barry Goldwater was going to fly them himself. Barry Goldwater's a great pilot, by the way. I don't offer to fly <laughs> Senator Obama <laughs> around. I'm not a great pilot. <laughs> uh, I thought I was good. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> thought I was good until I intercepted a surface air missile with my own airplane. But, <laughs> but let's do these town hall meetings. Then That way you don't have spin rooms. That way you don't have uh, the gotcha questions. Then you don't have the quotes taken out of context, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, I ask again that uh, Senator Obama would uh, agree. I'll reserve a day a week from now before the convention so that we could engage in what the American people, I think, want. And they don't have a lot of trust and confidence in us these days, my friends. I don't know if you saw, but there was a major poll just a couple of days ago that showed the approval rating of Congress at 13%. You get down that low, you get down to blood relatives and paid staffers. You don't get <laughs> down any lower than that. And the American people want us to put the country first. They want us to put the country first. As President of the United States, I will do that. I'd like to mention to you, I think, the three major challenges, the three major aspects of this campaign that are important to the American people are reform, prosperity, and peace. Reform, we have to reform the way we're doing business in Washington, D.C., as you know. Um, the American people, as I just quoted that, that poll to you, and that's consistent. Uh, we need to clean up our act. We need to fix Social Security. We need to fix Medicare. But we got to start by eliminating the wasteful pork barrel earmark spending, which has corrupted us in Washington. I promise you, <laughs> as as President of the United States, I will veto every earmark bill that comes across my desk. You will know their names. I will make them famous. I am proud. I am, I am proud. I am proud to have never asked for nor received a single pork barrel project or earmark project for my state of Arizona in the years that I have served. Senator Obama has asked for and received tens of millions of dollars of earmark projects. So that's one uh, of the differences. So we got to reform the way that we do business in Washington. And there's young people here at this town hall meeting, and thank you for being here. But are we going to hand off to the next generation of Americans, an unluckier generation, a broken social security system, a broken Medicare system? Or are we going to do the hard things? And that means putting our country first. And I want to assure you, as President of the United States, I will always put my country first. I promise you that. I also want to tell you that, uh, mention prosperity. Americans are hurting right now. Every, Americans are hurting, and Americans tonight are sitting around the kitchen table, some of them, how are we going to make our mortgage payment? Some have suddenly and lost, and recently lost their jobs. So Americans are hurting, and we've got to return prosperity. And there's many things that we have to do. One of them is to make people, make people who are eligible to stay in their own homes. If it's their primary residence, they should be able to go down and apply for a FHA guaranteed 30-year uh, mortgage at the new price uh, value of their home and pay off their mortgage and be able to remain in their house. That not only helps them, but it helps the lender as well, as well as the governments that have to pick up the tab when there's an empty home. So we, we need to, to do that. We need to keep people's taxes low. Why should Americans at this difficult time increase the amount of money they're sending to Washington? They shouldn't. I want to tell you, I will keep taxes low. Senator Obama wants to raise them. I won't raise them. And the third thing, that w there are many things we need to do, but another major thing we need to do is to become independent of foreign oil and do it soon, and we just must do it immediately. And we, look, I can't tell you that the price of a barrel of oil is going down anytime real soon, but I can tell you that I can put this nation working together, putting America first, putting our nation first, our country first, we can become independent of, our, of foreign oil, and we can become 
a nation that doesn't have our national security threatened, and we can eliminate, over time, greenhouse gas emissions that are harming our planet. There's three issues that there's a nexus. One, our climate, because we've got to reduce these greenhouse gas emissions, which I believe are damaging our planet. We must have uh, uh, economic recovery. I mean, Americans right now on fixed income are hurting the most every time they go to the gas station. And we also have to understand it's a national security issue. We're sending somewhere around 500 billion, depends on where the price of oil goes, a dollars a year to countries that don't like us very much. And some of that money ends up in the hands of terrorist organizations. We can't do it from a national security standpoint. And our economy, obviously, is impacted by it dramatically. I'd like to give low-income Americans a little holiday from the gas tax. I've run into people. I'd like to just give them a little break, a little break. And particularly those who ran into a guy recently who owns two trucks. And he obviously is feeling this very badly because that's his business. And he said he'd love to have a 24 and a half cent reduction per gallon in the diesel tax he's paying. So, look, I'm not saying that's the answer, but I'd like to give him a little bit of a break. I'd also like to, if the states agree, that we should have our offshore exploration for oil and natural gas. If the states want to do it, we should do it. 